Yeah, I think I've got just about everything for the party. Uh-huh. Well, I, uh, I, I could use a pumpkin. <laughs> no, man, I just haven't had time to carve one myself. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, you know what? I've got to go, but I will see you at, uh, at lunch, okay? All right, yeah, bye. Uh, there's a rumor going around the building that you're having a Halloween party. <laughs> now, now, Mrs. Fong, how could it be going around the building when it's just you and I who live here? Uh, let me rephrase that. I put this against the door and I heard you on the phone. <laughs> anyway, paragraph six of your lease says no costume party, so pack up your pumpkin, baby. No one's bobbing for apples tonight. <laughs> Oh, it's such a shame, because I was just about to give you your invitation. <laughs> oh, you're in luck then. Uh, boy, that nullifies paragraph six. I thought it might. Okay, I see you tonight, Keen. We're going to party like it's 1999. <laughs> I was sort of rushed. <laughs> I could have done that. <laughs> if, I, if I had a better pumpkin and a sharper knife and <laughs> you were there to carve it for me. You're welcome, dear. Okay, so we've got the pumpkin, we've got the refreshments. Everybody in the office is coming, except for Vicky, who's out of town, and Maddie, who would probably rather clean her oven than come to my party. <laughs> now, Susan, that is not true at all. My oven is self-cleaning. And I'd rather stick my head in it than come to your party. Well, don't forget to preheat. Hey, uh, Susan, is it all right if I bring a date? Oh, absolutely. Everybody is welcome. As long as they wear a costume. I don't want a repeat of last year, you know, where everybody came in regular clothes and I was Jiminy Cricket. That was Jiminy Cricket? I thought you were the Incredible Hulk. Me too. The Incredible Hulk? Yeah, yeah, you had the green skin and the bulging vein in your neck when you got angry. Why the hell would the Hulk have a tiny umbrella and a top hat and spats? There goes that vein again. Hey, Pete, you and Hank are coming in costume tonight, right? Uh, Hank's out of town on business, but I'm coming as a shoe salesman. A shoe salesman? Pete, this is Halloween, and you, of all people, should let loose and fly. Be fabulous, be exciting. I know. That's why I got the foot sizer. We are going shopping. So, are you going to tell me what your costume is, or do you want to keep it a surprise? I want to keep it a surprise. You don't have a costume, do you? Oh, there goes the surprise. <laughs> I'm kidding. I have a great costume. I am going to be the guy with a pencil in his ear. If I don't see you in a real costume, you're going to be the guy who doesn't get any until Christmas. <laughs> chips. I swear, I was only going 55, Ponch. <laughs> yeah, well, tell it to the judge. Lady with uh, long hair and big shell. I'm Botticelli's Birth of Venus. Very famous painting. Don't blame yourself. I thought she was Stevie Nicks. A lady from Titanic. Donna, you look exquisite to me. Oh, thank you. Keep that up and I'll let you draw me naked. Oh. <laughs> oh. Hello. Dr. Joyce Brothers. Hi, Keen. Pretty good costume, huh? This is fun. It ain't Jackie Chan. Excuse me. Okay. You know... Dressing up as an authority figure is a healthy way to gain social acceptance and have fun. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Fung, you're a piece of work. <laughs> you can tell she's Mrs. Fung? 
Oh, Susan, who do you think it is? Dr. Joyce Brothers? <laughs> Cheek or cheek. I know you. I'm under your legacy. The early years. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Before you married, um... Oh, what's your name? Uh... Hey, Susan. This is Jenny. Hi. <laughs> well, welcome. And, and you're supposed to be... Oh, come on, Susan. Isn't it obvious? She's a Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. <laughs> She slaps on a choir robe and you know it's Ruth Bader Ginsburg? I wear a 50-pound wig and staple a clam to my ass and you don't have a clue? Susan, don't be hostile to people just because they can't tell you're the Little Mermaid. <laughs> this is fun. Cool costume. You're not the Little Mermaid, are you? No, thank you. So it's what? Stevie Nicks at an oyster bar? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Well, it's about time you got here. Attention, everybody. Presenting the new, improved Pete Mulligan Fontaine. Hey, everybody. So, Jenny, Todd says you, you work at the record store. Yeah but I'm thinking of quitting. I work so much overtime that I hardly have any time to spend with my coven. Your coven? Yeah, I'm a witch. But with the hours I put in at the store, it's really hard to develop my craft. Yeah, well, it's never easy balancing a, a career in Lucifer. Excuse me for a I thought that you were your... Uh... Your charming friend Jenny is a witch. I know. Sexy, isn't it? <laughs> Sexy? Or perhaps a one-way ticket to hell? Louise, relax. Modern witchcraft is a harmless excuse for women to get together. It's like a Tupperware party. <laughs> yeah, well, correct me if I'm wrong, but at Tupperware parties, they don't cut the heads off of chickens. <laughs> I still like the guy with the pencil stuck in his ear. Hello? Oh, Maddie, look, I'm already late for Susan's party. Can this wait till tomorrow? Oh, sure. I'll just spend the rest of the night in jail. Let's go, honey. I will be right with you. And would you get a mint? <laughs> hey, big guy. Uh, it's big boy. <laughs> Give me 50 bucks. I'll call you whatever you want. Hey, Maddie, are you okay? Yeah, Jack, I'm fine. You might want to dial back on the hair gel, though. Yeah, this is the best I can do. My giant blow dryer's broken. <laughs> Look, I really appreciate you coming down here. Oh, don't worry about it. I'll bail you out as soon as I can. And if you don't mind, can we keep this between us? Uh, you have my word as a man wearing Herman Munster's shoes. I won't tell a soul. <laughs> Including your girlfriend. It's just that this is such a non-event that I don't want people making something out of nothing. Well, Maddie, I wouldn't exactly call a DUI nothing. Come on, Jack. I was at a party. I had a couple drinks. All I did was roll through a stop sign. Uh, excuse me? How much longer till I get out of here? Paperwork takes at least a couple hours. Although, I might speed things up if your lawyer gets me a cheeseburger and a chocolate shake. <laughs> you know, I wonder if it's against the law to ask a cop to kiss your big checkered butt. <laughs> Actually, it is. Susan, you're out of ice, which is ironic when you think about it, coming from me. <laughs> well, all right. You uh, claw your way into a lifeboat and I'll go to the store. Okay. <laughs> There's plenty in my apartment and the door's open. While you're there, grab the Miracle Whip. This thing's dry as a bone. <laughs> <laughs> well, it didn't stop you from eating three other ones. <laughs> and that voice, it's really freaking me out. <laughs> Trick or treat. Uh, Nana, uh, is Jack, is Susan there? No, uh, she's at Dr. Joyce Brothers getting ice and Miracle Whip. <laughs> I'll explain later. Well, look, um, when she gets back, would you tell her that it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to make the party? Oh, anything wrong? Oh, no, 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 uh, everything's fine. Uh, just tell her I'll explain tomorrow. Oh, okay. Bye. 
Sure, I look fabulous, but I don't feel fabulous. I feel stupid. Well, you know, Peter, cross-dressing can be a healthy way to gain social acceptance and have fun. I'm not sure I follow. It's simple. Loosen up. You're dressed like a diva. Act like one. That's what I said! <laughs> okay, I'll try it. <laughs> hey, Pete, you want a caramel apple? Honey, if I want something sweet, I'll nibble on that hunk by the door. <laughs> That's my boy! Hey, that was kind of fun. <laughs> Ooh, somebody call poison control. This pattern can induce vomiting. <laughs> Listen, Jack, I just wanted to thank you again for last night. Oh, don't worry about it. How you feeling? Oh, I'm fine. I was a little shaky, but after some scotch and cornflakes, I was good to go. Well, it's kind of great to see that you can joke about it. You are joking, right? Oh, yeah. I hate cornflakes. Oh, come on, Jack, lighten up. I'm the one with the hangover and the rap sheet. Well, I'm the one who's a little bit concerned about my star reporter. Oh, Jack. Like you've never had a couple of drinks at a bar and then driven Wait a through minute. a little... Wait a minute. I thought you said it was a party. Party, bar, who cares? <laughs> Let's just forget about it, okay? Okay. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. No problem. I'm done. Oh, Susan, I am so sorry about last night. What happened? I was worried about you. My car broke down. Really? Where? Yeah, on Pine and Van Ness. It was a total nightmare. You know, uh, Vicky usually drops some pencils near the door and spends about 10 minutes picking them up. I am not trying to listen. And this is a complete accident. Oh. And then the auto club, it doesn't show up till 1.30 in the morning, so by the time I get home, it's just so late, it was too late to call you. Wait a minute. This isn't some elaborate story that you made up because you didn't want to wear a costume. Oh, I had a costume. Oh, I only wish you got a chance to see it. Sorry, your night was so tough, too. Well, listen, I hear your party was an incredible success, and Louise said that you made a wonderful little mermaid. I was not the little mermaid. Oh, don't tell me you were the incredible Hulk two years in a row. Oh, well, finally got all those in order. Well, they're all blank. Yes, and that's what made it so difficult. Hey, what's this? Oh, it's from Jenny. Uh, Jenny the witch? Yeah. It says a uh, special apple for a special guy. It's from New Zealand and it's only ripe two weeks a year. Huh. Uh, let me see. You know, uh, a knife would be neater. What the hell are you doing? Well, I mean, I'm saving your life. Witchcraft is riddled with apple-related tragedy. Like what? Like what? Like like Snow White, huh? Yeah, and then and other terrifying examples that don't come to mind right now. But Todd, I, I grew up in a part of the world where witchcraft is taken very seriously. Okay. In fact, according to my mother, her third cousin Javier, he got mixed up with a witch who turned him into a frog. A frog? Yes. And you actually believe this? Yeah. Well, I don't know what I believe, but ever since Javier disappeared, my family's had a history of wars. And was this before or after the history of insanity? It's so weird, I smell applesauce. Hey, cats and kittens, your mail has arrived. And so have your letters and packages. Uh, Pete, in case you didn't notice, Halloween ended last night. Talk to the mail, cause the ears ain't listening. Anywho, I'm late because a crew of hard bodies has Pine Street under more construction than Cher's face. Pine Street is under construction, are you sure? Oh, yeah, they closed it a couple days ago. Yeah, but it's still open at night, isn't it? Nope, completely shut down. Well, this is interesting. Oh, Mary, if you think this is interesting, we have got to get you a life. <laughs> well, I wouldn't worry about my life so much as Jack's. I don't know what you're talking about, but I am loving the dude, girl. It's Todd, over here on the shelf. Oh, my God. Oh, 
Oh, my God. Well, you were right about Jenny, man. Look what that witch did to me. I, I tried to stop you. You wouldn't listen to me. Now, look at you. I know. If I ever run into a French chef, I'm going to become an amputee. Okay. <laughs> okay, let me guess. Uh, there's ten people standing behind me right now just ready to laugh, right? Nope. Just one. But he's got a camcorder. <laughs> <laughs> you got he fell for it. Right. Okay, now give me the tape, Mark, all right? Not a chance. Now, give me ten dollars. Come on. <laughs> Easy, ladies. There's enough of me to go around. Uh, Maddie, you ask first. Start with you. Jack. Okay, we'll go by height and start with Susan. <laughs> so, uh, what can I do you for? Well, you can start by telling me what you really did last night. I thought I already did. So did I. Well, then I guess we're done here. <laughs> oh, one more thing, Jack. You're a liar. Well, that's a pretty strong accusation. Do you have anything to back it up? Pine Street has been closed for days. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Jack, where the hell were you? Look, Susan, I know that you want to know where I was last night, and I want to tell you. But the problem is, I can't. Oh, great. First you lie to me, and then you tell me you can't tell me the truth. You're gonna have to do better than that, Jack. I'm sorry, but I gave someone my word. Really? Well, the last time that I checked, girlfriend outranked someone. Look, I know you want the truth, but if I'm honest with you, I betray someone else. Now, is that really something you want? No, of course not. Unless, of course, you feel so guilty that you're compelled to tell the truth, in which case I'll force myself to listen. <laughs> last night had nothing to do with us. You're just going to have to trust me. Look, it's a matter of honor. I can't tell you. Honor? Honor? If you had any honor, Jack, you wouldn't have lied to me about your car breaking down. You're right. I guess I was afraid you'd get mad. Oh, well, what do you think I am now? Mad. And I think we can both see why that was something I wanted to avoid. I don't know what I am angrier about. The fact that you lied to me. Or the fact that you felt that you had to. Well, why don't you choose one and just read me out about it, and then we can move past it. Well, I don't think that we can move past it. Well, I... Excuse me. Um, Jack was with me last night. What? He was bailing me out of jail. I asked him not to say anything, and since he's honoring that request, I guess it's caused some problems, which is not fair to him. So I hope that clears everything up. Does for me. <laughs> well, I guess it does for me, too. So are you, um... Are you okay? Yeah, fine. Now I'm leaving. Oh, just uh, out of curiosity, why were you in jail? Not important. Oh, my God, you finally shot somebody. <laughs> okay. So? So. So that, that was a, that was a good thing you did. Thank you. And we are okay? You have my word. That's good. How come you're standing so far away? <laughs> so Jack, now that it's uh, just you and me. Uh-huh. Why oh, was she really in jail? <laughs> <laughs> nice try! You. Me? Why did your grandmother change my peat? Change my peat? What are you talking about? Hi, girlfriend. <laughs> I come back from Tacoma, all of a sudden he's one of the village people. Well, I think that she was just trying to give him a little style. He already had style. If you want to be a ridiculous stereotype, go ahead. 
but do it without me. I thought you'd like the new me. I like the old you, the you who plays Battleship, watches Dateline, wears underpants. How did you know I was going commando? You have 23 pairs of underpants, there are 23 pairs in your dresser. Do the math. Hank, when I put on the flashy clothing, for the first time in my life, I was the center of attention. And that's what you want? I just don't want you to wake up one morning and think I'm boring. Boring? You boring? Who could think you're boring? A am I right? Oh, I think you're both very exciting men. See? Now, go put on your BVDs and let's go home. Go ahead. Go ahead. Look, Jenny, I know, I'm sorry, but I just don't think that we should see each other anymore. Yeah, me too. Okay. All right. Bye. You broke up with him? Yeah. Over the phone? Yeah. You don't break up with a witch over the phone. Everybody knows you. What's the big deal? What could she do? <laughs> Tom. Yeah. Uh, no, nothing. Hi there. Mrs. Fong, Halloween is over. Take off the stupid costume. Excuse me. <laughs> hey, Keen, nice office. <laughs> You really are Dr. Joyce Brothers. I got you, Susan. Louise? Mrs. Fong lent me the costume. But you're, you're a foot taller. It's a good costume.